Guys, um, I want to talk to you uh, just for a couple of minutes about something that um, is important to me. Uh, maybe uh, after I share this, this, this thought, maybe you'll find some relevance of importance as, as, it, as you apply it to your life, you know, as well. Uh, but I'm going to start off, I'm going to go to the book, but I'm not going to be in the book, but just for one verse. And then I'm going to elaborate on what I just stated a second ago. Uh, in, inside of our old book, Book of Corinthians, is uh, chapter First Corinthians chapter ten, is verse twelve, and it reads like this: Wherefore let him that thinks he stands, take heed, lest he falls. Take heed, unless he falls. Therefore let him who thinks he's standing, take heed, lest he falls. Now, this is my interpretation of what I just read. It's, it's coming back to, to understanding the importance of staying conscious, staying conscious inside of the moment, pulling oneself back. You know, we live in a day and time due to social media, constantly screaming in our ears of a time where National agendas, I'll be kind and use that, I'll say it that way, national agenda is programming us to not only think about things that are not, all, that's not natural to us, but also to embrace and accept those things that are not natu natural to us. Things like homosexuality, <clears throat> one of the most unnatural um, behaviors known to mankind. A behavior that 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 surely has caused many people to 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 lose their lives because of sexual activity in regards to that type of lifestyle. Of course, you're not going to hear about that now. If you were in the '80s, you would have heard about AIDS and how it was uh, probably one of the it was the number one uh, killer of gay men. And then they threw the drug thing in to kind of cover it up a little bit. Now the drug thing is totally covering it up. But the truth of the matter is that AIDS and HIV, which can lead to AIDS, are constantly killing. But that's not even the point that I'm, that I'm talking about here, pulling oneself back. What I'm talking about is, is understanding the importance of finding oneself by staying conscious in the moment. So when Paul over in Corinthians tell us, take heed while we stand, at least we fall, what he's saying to you is that you need to make sure that you stay in touch with your own reality. And now you might say, well, DFG, give me more information. I'm going to give you more information. Staying in touch with your own reality is, is understanding where you are in every second, every minute, every hour of your life. Being conscious of what's going on inside of yourself. Not being conscious of what's going on around you. Because what's going on around us can be very deceptive very misleading, and very manipulating because of what we call peer pressure and now even broader than peer pressure, social pressure. What are people going to think about me? What are people going to say about me? What are people going to do to me? And we spend so much time um, externalizing that that we don't even give any thought to how it affects us internally. So we're so caught up externally around these perceptions, these perceptions, these perceptions. I have to make sure I create the right perception. That we don't realize that internally, guys, it is not only corrupting our, our, our mental capacity to be able to reason, but it's destroying the very essence of the soul. The very essence of what is important for the furtherance of civilization, for the furtherance of mankind, for the furtherance of nature, quite frankly, for the quality of life. We are at a, at a at my opinion, we're at a, at a crucial stage that we're going to lose multi-generations through the, through the perception and deception of the illusion of what is Good, 
what is in our best interest, what is success, what is prosperity. Three generations, my generation, my children's generation, and then the babies. We're going to lose three generations because of this, this illusion of what it takes for others to think something well of me. At the same time, I'm becoming sicker, and I'm not talking about me personally, but I am, I'm not excluding myself, but I'm becoming more ill by the moment. My mind is becoming ill, my heart is becoming ill, even my body, because of what I'm consuming, hiding my frustration through substance abuse, hiding my frustration through food abuse, uh, hiding my frustration through, again, psychological abuse. Social media. Yes, social media, psychological abuse. Living through others, living through the perception of others, living through the perception of, you know, what is considered talent, what is considered prosperity, what is considered fame. Like fame has some, you know, uh, elevated foundation of life that brings about utopian joy. Yet we see all these famous people destroying themselves. And those few who don't destroy themselves get destroyed by the industry that created their fame in the first place. Yet social media has a lot of our people just consumed in it, consumed it. Give me more, give me more, give me more. I need more, I need more. You know, there, there's a scripture talked about the Nephilims in the book of Enoch, in our book. You'll find it in, in this book, but you won't find it in your King James Version, but you would have found it in earlier versions of the book. And these Nephilims, they consumed so much food, because so much food, they kept eating and eating, then after a while, they didn't have any more food, so they started eating people. The Nephilims were giants, the fallen angels that, you know, some are going to say, okay, he's loopy. I didn't write the stuff, guys. I'm just, I'm just sharing with you what's written in the book. And I can show you in both of these books that it's there. I didn't put it there. And there's historical fact that these giants lived on this planet. But they became so consumed with, 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 with gluttony that they ate everything that what they were supposed to eat. And then there was no more of that to eat. They started eating each other. That's where we are now. That's where we are now. <laughs> because of a lack of our ability to pull back. To come back and take heed of the moment. I mean, we're, we're, we're so far advanced in our minds now that we don't even see people anymore. We walk by people coming and going. We don't acknowledge them. And if we do acknowledge them, it's not a true acknowledgement. It's just a, hey, you're in my way. A, hey, you're in my path. So let me say something, you know, just to be courteous. Or let me say something because you aggravated me because you distracted my, uh, you know, my, my, I don't know, my, my, my thought process, you know, my, 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 my consumption would, or my being my consumed, yes, I guess that's the right word, you, you impacted, you know, my moment of being consumed in something that hadn't happened yet. I was fully distracted and you had the audacity to get in my way. You know, that end of those individuals too, with whichever one of those two classifications that they fall in. And then again, they may fall in just the abyss, but they just don't even see people anymore. They see nothing but the, what's in the imagination of their minds. They spend all day in another place. They hear, they, their bodies here, but their minds are way somewhere else. And so because of that, all natural emotion, you know what I'm saying, all natural affection, all, all consciousness in terms of what is good and what is evil now is, 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 is erased. And now we have a substitute of, of that has come in and consumed us with, again, a false narrative around what is good. You follow me? A false narrative. Also around what is evil. And so 
I'm saying is that what I'm saying to you is as the scripture said, when it says take heed, you know, while you think you stand, least you fall, it's really telling you that the very last moment of your life will be the last moment of your life. And that could be any moment of your life. Have you given that any thought? And if you've given it thought, how do you want that last moment to be? How do you want it to be? Worried about some bill you can't pay? Worried about some job you didn't get? Worried about somebody who you thought loved you that didn't love you? What, 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 what do you want it to be? Because whatever you're thinking, wherever your mind is taking you to, that's where you will be. Your body won't be there, but it may as well be wherever your mind is. But your body won't be there. Your body will be probably where it is right now as you're listening to me. But I challenge you, where's your mind? When this video is over with, I want you to take just a minute and just reflect and see if you can just stay in a minute. See if you can stay focused for one minute where you are. When this video is over, just do that. Give Test yourself. I think you're going to be shockingly surprised, many of you, that you can't do it. Because we're so caught up in the worry and, and the issues that have nothing to do with what you can control right now. You're not going to be able to do it. The exceptional few, those who can do it, you know, and I, I'm, <laughs> again, let me be perfectly clear. I don't even, there are times I fight the state in one minute. Talk about being able to focus on what I want to be focused on for one minute. Therefore, that's why I do a lot of writing and different things like that, because it forces me to concentrate. It forces me to stay right here, right now in the moment. You know, those who know me, they, they know I'll go out in nature and I'll take pictures and I'll, you know, and, and frame pictures and blog on pictures, etc. Because it allows me to, to, it forces me not to get caught up in the worries and the cares and the issues of life, knowing that I'm not there yet. But my mind wants me to believe that I'm there, as your mind probably does with you. But it's but when that happens, it's taking away all sense of reality, guys, is what I'm saying to you. It's causing us to live in an illusion of an illusion. As though we can control what's going to happen five minutes from now. There are people right now who are probably working out in the gym. In the next five minutes, they're going to drop dead. For whatever reason. People going to work to use the restroom. They're going to drop dead in the restroom. In two minutes. Right now. But, I, and you know, you have to ask yourself the question. You know the answer to, not the answer to this question, but you know this is true. You know, do you think that for, for one moment that they thought that that was going to happen to them? Many and many instances. I'm talking about, you know, I'm not talking about those who intentionally you know, bring home upon themselves. I'm just talking about when life, your clock stops. When your clock hit midnight. You know, I was talking to a very dear, well, <laughs> I was talking to my stepmother yesterday. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this story. On yesterday, and I was talking to her, and we, we were talking about, you know, the um, the importance of, you know, um, embracing the moment, not getting caught up in, you know, um, what can happen tomorrow. Because a year ago, at this very same time, she found out she, she had a potentially terminal illness. And she was worried about all kinds of things. And all of a sudden, that illness popped up and changed her life for the last year. By the grace of Yah, she's doing a lot better. But we were talking about just the vanity of, of, of the assumption of, you know, what I'm going to be doing at this particular time. You know, one moment later, when, one moment later, you were going to have no control over it. So I'm going to end this video because I can go on. But time passes fast when I'm talking about these kind of things. At least that's how it feels to me. Take heed while you stay, at least you fall. You, Force yourself to stay in the moment. Give yourself the test. When this video is over with, see if you can focus one minute. If you can just be where you are for one minute, see if you can do it. And if you can't, it's time to stop and spend time and reflect.